Hello folks, this is the third attempt and hopefully will be the final attempt to uh, do this live stream today. here, Benjamin France. Uh, this is the third and hopefully final attempt today to do this live stream. I'm going to be doing a series of these videos for the foreseeable future on my lunch hour on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, calling these lunchtime learning or lunchtime lessons. And this series is Guitar 101. This is designed basically for people who are wanting to learn to play guitar but have no experience with the guitar in the past. So we are starting from square one. My assumption for anyone watching this video that's interested in this is that you don't really know anything about guitar and you're just starting out. Whether you have a guitar that's been lying around the house, maybe you bought one and never took lessons, maybe you uh, had someone buy you a guitar, maybe a roommate moved out and left one behind, maybe significant other bought you a guitar, maybe your parents bought you a guitar, whatever the case is, and you haven't really started taking lessons yet and you're not quite sure what to do. So. These videos hopefully will help you kick off your musical journey learning how to play guitar. Like I said, we're going to start from square one, the bare basics of what to do and how you begin, and then we'll progress as the lessons go on. Uh, I am doing these, obviously, 100% for free. My goal long term is to start teaching and doing private lessons face to face with everybody as a side gig uh, on top of my uh, day job that I have currently working at a local college. But for now, like a lot of you out there, I'm sure, I am pretty well stuck at home, quarantined at home within reason due to social distancing and due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic going on. So I thought this would be a great way to share my love of music, my love of guitar, and uh, maybe help somebody else kind of develop that same love as well. So a little bit about me. I have been playing guitar for... 30 years, a little over 30 years. I wish I could say it was consistent. That full 30 years, that would be a lie, but relatively consistent for 30 years or so now, since my early, early, early teens. Thankfully, my parents uh, recognized when my older brother, who was kind of my hero, moved out of the house when I was between 12 and 13 years old, that I was really despondent and needed something to take up my time. So they bought me my first electric guitar, and as they say, the rest is history. I took lessons for a handful of years, up until somewhere after I turned 16 years old, and then uh, kind of uh, laid off it for a little bit, got back into it in my early, late teens, early 20s, and played in a few local bands. And then uh, laid off it once again for a little bit, starting my college career, and so on and so forth with life, but now I'm back and I've been playing pretty consistently for a while now. And uh, I would put myself as probably an intermediate level player. I'm definitely not a beginner by any stretch of the imagination. Definitely if I'd been playing consistently for 30 years and practicing and honing my skills, I probably would be much further along than I am, but I would say probably upper level intermediate playing. So that's a little bit about me. Now let's talk a little bit about these courses and or these lessons, what we're gonna be doing. They'll be limited to probably about 20 to 25, maybe 30 minutes tops, because like I said, I'm gonna be doing them on my lunch break. I'm currently working from home, like a lot of people are, and I take a lunch break from one until 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So these will start at typically at about 1.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. I believe that's GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, minus six hours, for those of you that might be elsewhere in the world if you wanna to try to convert that and if you're seeing this. Uh, Obviously, right now, that's not the case. It is currently five minutes until 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's because I had a couple technical snafus trying to get this up and going uh, earlier today. So, uh, wanted to make sure it was available to everybody, though. So, I'm streaming this live currently on my Facebook page. Also, recording the stream. So, I will be putting it up as a saved video and saved audio on my Facebook page and on a couple other social media channels that we'll talk about before we're done. But I wanted to get this up there for those of you that wanted to see it earlier today and maybe didn't get to see the live stream. And since I didn't have it saved, I wanted to take the chance to re-record it and get it out there. So that being said, that's the purpose of this. So let's get started. Let's dive in with the bare basics. First off, let's look at a guitar. This 
is a guitar, in case you don't know. Obviously, you probably do. Uh, this is an electric guitar. However, most of the concepts that we're going to be covering up, pretty much all of them are going to be universal to electric or acoustic. So if you have something that has six strings on it, like this, what we're going to be covering pretty much applies, whether it's electric or acoustic. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of basics on the guitar itself. So as I'm talking, telling you to do certain things or teaching you to do certain things, you'll know what I'm talking about. Parts of the guitar. The main part of the guitar that I'm holding here, this really pretty green part. This is the guitar body. On the body, we have pickups on an electric guitar, which help it amplify the sound, plug in an amplifier. We have a bridge. What a bridge does basically is it holds the strings. Moving up towards this way, towards my fireplace, you can see this, what looks like a plank or a board here, this is the neck of the guitar. On the front of the neck is what's called the fretboard. That's the part that you can see here with the little dots on it. The reason they call it the fretboard is because you'll see these little metal wires here. These are called frets. We'll get more into what those do and how we use those later, but that is why this is called the fretboard. It is a board with frets on it. Kind of makes sense, yes? And then the end here, this is called the headstock. The black part on this guitar is the headstock. It has the tuning keys where the strings attach to and how you tune it and some other things that you don't really need to know as a beginner. This is an Ibanez RG, RG470, I believe. This is kind of my current obsession of the guitars I own. I've owned, like a lot of guitar players, I've played for a, lot of time, a long time, a lot of different guitars, but this is the one that I bought most recently and have been in love with it pretty much since I bought it. Wanted one of these for a long time. So now that we know the basics of the guitar, let's start talking about actually playing the guitar. Uh, first thing, you have to you have strings on the guitar. You have six strings. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You have to play those somehow. Just having them sitting there or doing this or doing this doesn't do a whole lot. So typically you're gonna use a pick. That's what this is. It's called a pick or a plectrum, depending on where you are in the world, but it's the same thing. How do you hold the pick? I recommend you hold it between your thumb and your first finger like this. You'll notice looking at it there on the first finger, it's not quite in line with it. If you can see the thumb on the back, it's almost perfectly par uh, parallel to the tip of my thumb is where the tip of that pick is, that little pointy part of the triangle. How hard do you hold on to this thing? You want to keep a hold of it enough that when you hit it on something like a string, that you don't drop it. However, you do not want to do this. You don't want to put a death grip on it. See how my fingers are getting white there? What will happen over time is your fingers will get really, really tired doing that. So you don't want to do that. You want to hold it just where it's firm, but where we hit a string with it when you do this, and you don't drop it. So that's how you hold your pick. Uh, let's talk about this arm while we're here and what we do with it. Do not chicken wing your arm. Don't sit here and try to do things like this. You are going to wear all of these muscles out really quick. You can obviously ruin your shoulder long term. Also, you're not going to have a whole lot of control over what you need to do with your pick if you've got your arm floating up in the air here. Typically what you'll do is you'll take your forearm, this part of your arm, and you'll lay it somewhere on the guitar, lean it on the guitar to where when you're going to pick, your pick is somewhere between the end of the neck, remember this plank of wood, and the bridge, the front of the bridge that I said. So you want your pick to land somewhere in this region between my two fingers here and you can place your arm accordingly. Where in there doesn't necessarily matter, especially not when you're first starting out, but that's a pretty ergonomic way to do that. Your, your arm's supported, so you're not wearing out those muscles, and you're pretty well in the right place. How do you pick? In general, your picking is gonna come from your wrist. You're not gonna be doing a lot of this. This is very inefficient. If you're trying to play chords and strum something, you don't wanna go. That will get very tired and really quick. So it's predominantly your wrist, moving your wrist, rotating it back and forth. Some people, as you get more advanced, will do things with their fingers, where they do things like this, where their wrist isn't moving very much. But for now, just focus on that wrist, flexing it back and forth like that, kind of rotating it around. If you could see it up close, it would be doing like this motion. It's almost like it's rotating and you're pushing your finger through it, like that. Make sense? So. There are two different things you can do with the pick. You can strum chords. Strumming is gonna be where you kind of rake the pick across strings. So, remember I said we have six strings. A strum would be something like this. You start on one string, you just rake it and drag it down those strings. 
or you can, for our purposes, we'll call just traditional picking individual notes. So that'd be more like this. You've got strumming, and you've got picking. Make sense? Let's step back for just a second on how do you hold the guitar. There are a couple different ways you can do that when you're setting down. Traditional classical style guitar, like a classical musician, would be how I'm setting. If you're right-handed like me, you'd have the body of the guitar where this little indentation is on your left leg, somewhere up close to your body. And that puts you in a very good ergonomic position where you're setting straight forward. It's easy for your arm to reach all the way up and down the fretboard of the neck. And it keeps things nice and squared up. It also keeps your body pretty well squared up too, so you're not twisting weird. Now, a lot of times people will play, and frequently I also play, if I'm not doing teaching like this, in a different style where the body of the guitar is back over on my right leg as opposed to my left leg. I've heard this called a few different things. The one that's always stuck with me is cowboy style. Think of somebody setting out on the range with their guitar, or maybe they're on their horse and they're... going back and forth with the horse there, cowboy style. When you're first starting out, I would recommend staying with a more traditional classical style because it's going to keep your arms and your hands in a better place. Also, you're not twisting your body as much, so it's not going to make your back do weird things. If you're younger, you may not have to worry about that, but when you get to be my age, those things do matter. Ergonomics make a difference. You start good habits now. So, we got the guitar sitting directly in front of us, classical position. On the left leg, if you're right-handed, that part of the body, that little indentation there on your leg. The other part of the body, this part back here, kind of butts up against the inside of your right leg. Okay? Arm, forearm on the body of the guitar. Remember, you want it positioned to where your pick is somewhere between that finger and that finger. So you want it somewhere between the end of the neck and the bridge. Somewhere right in the middle is usually a pretty good spot. So get your forearm to where that's comfortable there. And you can strum or you can pick. Make sense? Hopefully so. So, strum with me a few times here. Set, make sure you're comfortable. Try to set up straight because yes, you can absolutely bend your back and do this type of stuff and slump. And once again, that'll wear you out quicker. Kind of keep good posture is going to help you, believe it or not. I'm not a gym teacher, obviously, or a PE teacher, but that does help with this too. So, let's practice a little bit. Let's strum across all six strings. Remember, firm but not death grip on the pick. Forearm here on the body of the guitar. Let's get the pick where it's right about there in the middle between the end of the neck and the bridge. And let's strum, just straight down. All we're doing is right hand. Left hand is doing nothing right now. If you want to rest it up here, you can, but you don't need to touch anything on the fretboard. And just strum. Not the most musical sounding of thing based on how a guitar is tuned normally but start getting used to that motion. And we're just focusing on strumming down right now. There are other picking techniques we'll get into more later. We want to just get started, so you're strumming down. Now let's pick notes. Just go one at a time, starting with the string closest to you. the difference between strumming and picking. We're in the proper posture. We're setting right. We, we know the different parts of the guitar. So now let's start getting a little more in depth. Uh, we need to know how to do different notes and with those different notes we need to know where they come from. So we're going to start with some very very basic stuff here. On your guitar, if you play a standard guitar, whether it's an acoustic or electric, a normal guitar, you have six strings. They're going to work, they will be identified by one of two things, either by the note name, which is a letter. And in standard Western music, your, your notes are going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats. There are also sharps and flats, but we're not going to get into that right now. So your strings will be identified either by a letter or they'll be identified by a number. We have six strings, so guess how many numbers there are. If you guess six, you're correct. Now, what may be a little counterintuitive to you, if you're right-handed like me and you're sitting here like this playing, this string's closest to you. That's not your first string. That's not string number one, though. That's string number six. Seems a little counterintuitive, 
So the easiest way to remember this is the bigger the number of the string, the closer to your head it is. The smaller the number, the farther away from your head it is. So if I tell you that I want you to play the first string, that's the smallest number, so that's gonna be the string the farthest away from you, or the very bottom one down here. Let me get up close where you can see that. The first string would be this little bitty guy right here. And the opposite end, the sixth string is this big fat one. That's the closest to your head when you're setting to play a guitar. So let's learn the strings real quick. Let's learn what number they are and let's learn their letter name when we're in normal or standard tuning on a guitar. So your thinnest string, the one furthest away from you is the first string. Sounds like this. The note that that plays in standard tuning, which also then gives it its name as a letter, is an E. So your first string is an E string. That's this note. Pick that with me three or four times. So that's your E string, which is also the first string. We're going to start climbing up these strings closer to our head. So the next one, based on remember that the bigger the number, the closer it is to you, if we were just on a one, the next string right above that is two. So that is your second string. And this is a B. It plays the note of B when it is just an open string, when your left hand's doing nothing. So second string is your B string. It sounds like this. Play it with me. Two, three, four. Second string is B, okay? Next string up, we're getting close to our head, is the third string. The note that this plays is a G. So this is your G string. So, sounds like this. Let's play that together now. Third string plays G. This string is G. Let's go back through the first three again. Your first string is an E. Sounds like this. Second string is a B. Sounds like this. Third string is a G. It sounds like this. Fourth string now. Remember, we're getting closer to our head, so the number's getting bigger. This string, string number four, is your fourth string. It plays the note of D, which means it is a D string. So fourth string is your D string. Sounds like this. This note is D. This string is D. Okay, so let's go back through those. First string, E. Second string, B. Third string, G. Fourth string, D. Next, string number five. We're getting close to the end. This string is an A string is the note that it plays. Pardon me, it plays the note A, which means this is an A string. It sounds like this. Okay, so fifth string. This string is A. It plays note A. Play that with me. One, two, three, four. Final one, the sixth string. Closest to you, the biggest or thickest string. This string is an E string. It, so it sounds like this. Now you're gonna notice there, if you remember from what we were saying before, that's the second time I've said it's an E string. That's not a mistake. On a guitar, there are two strings when it's open that play the same note. They're separated by two octaves. We'll get more into that later, what that means. Just know that this string, your sixth string, plays an E. Your first string, your littlest string, also plays an E if you're in standard tuning, which is what we want to be in. We'll talk more about what that means later. So, sixth string again. This string is E. It plays note E. Play it with me. One, two, three, four. So now let's go back through these again. First string is an E. Sounds like this. Second string is a B. Sounds like this. Third string is a G. Sounds like this. Fourth string is a D. It sounds like this. Fifth string is an A. It sounds like this. And the 
sixth string, the biggest, fattest string, is another E. It sounds like this. So now we know our strings. Let's go up the other way just so we can kind of memorize them. This is good to know. So sixth string is E. Fifth string, A. Fourth string, D. Third string, G. Second string, B. First string, also an E. So if we play them from the lowest pitch or the biggest number to the highest pitch, the smallest number, it is six, five, four, three, two, one. It is E, A, D, G, B, E. Let's do that again. E, A, D, G, B, E. Going from the farthest away to the closest to us. One, two, three, four, five, six. E, B, D, D, A, E. Seems very repetitive, but trust me, this is very important stuff that you understand because as we start getting more into specifics, such as playing different chords, you're going to need to know the string numbers and eventually I'm gonna quiz you on the string notes as well because that's how we start building chords is where we know notes. So, let's go through that one more time. E, B, G, D, A, E. Low to high, lowest pitch to high, so closest to us to farthest. E, A, D, G, B, E. E, B, G, D, A, E. Strum them, remember, strum straight across, drag your pick across all the strings. Pick them. Do that a couple times with me, so. Let's go back down from the highest. Okay, so what do we know now? We know how to hold the pick. We know the different parts of the guitar. We know some of the different parts of the guitar, the body, the neck, the fretboard, the little metal wires that are the frets and the headstock. So now let's talk about frets and let's talk about how those are gonna be applied to learning how to play chords, which is when you start actually making music and playing songs. Each one of these frets has a number to it. Let me get close here. You're gonna see these metal little bars on your guitar. They are numbered exactly like you would think. The first one is one, so it's the first fret, second fret, third fret, and so on, all the way up to wherever they end. On this guitar, this has 24 frets. So. Each one of those little bars is actually a fret, technically, and it's with that number. Fret 1, fret 2, fret 3, fret 4, and so on. You with me so far? The reason it's important to know that is because, or there's a reason that it's important to know the next part of this. When we play a note, it is actually called fretting a note, whether it's for a chord or a single note. However, you do not want to press directly on the fret. If you do that, you're going to get something that sounds like this. Hear that weird kind of popping noise versus this? How it's really short and kunk kunk kind of noise versus it ringing out? Listen to the difference in how it sustains or rings out. If we play right on the fret, we put our finger, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, on the fret, it sounds like this. Now, listen, if we put it actually not right on the fret. Hear how much clearer that sounds? It's important to know that because we're gonna learn a chord here in just a minute. The last thing we're gonna do today, because I don't wanna throw too much at brand new people at once, is we're going to learn one basic chord so you can get that chord memorized and get used to the fingering of that chord and making that chord. As I'm showing you how to make these chord, I'm going to tell you specific things such as put your second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Probably seems like a lot that I'm throwing out to there once, but this is why it's important that you memorize this stuff. You need to memorize what number the strings are. You need to memorize, you need to obviously you know which finger I'm talking about. The thing you need to also remember is you don't put your finger right on the fret. When I tell you I want you to play the second fret, you need to play the space, you need to put your finger on the space just to the left of that fret just before it. So if this is fret number two, and I tell you to play the second fret, you want your finger somewhere in this space between that piece of metal and this piece of metal. Where, you may ask. Doesn't really matter within reason. 
as long as you're not right up on the metal, but it needs to be in the space between it. So, example, I'm going to put my first finger, my index finger, this one, on the second fret, so right between that first metal bar and that second, right before the second metal bar, and we're going to do that on the fourth string. So remember, one, two, three, four. So this is our fourth string. We want it on the second fret, but remember, we're not on the metal. We're in that empty space before it. So there we go. Makes sense? Pay attention to that. You have to be very aware of that because I'm going to be teaching you chords and so on. You've got to know where you need to be. So memorize that. If you need to sit down and draw it out on a piece of paper, do that. I'm going to try to put some together some materials like that. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, probably when I do some theory-related stuff to maybe help you memorize that. But just remember, I tell you to play something on the second fret. That does not mean you put your finger on that piece of metal, that second piece of metal. You put it in this space just before that second piece of metal, closest to the headstock, to the head of the guitar. Okay? So, if I say something like, Bob, whoever's watching, Bob, put your first finger on the seventh fret of the sixth string. We know sixth string is this. You know what your first finger is. So you count the frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, you want to be in that space before it. So you want to put your first finger somewhere over in this space. If you rotate that where you can see it, before that bar. So that would give you this. On the sixth string, pardon me. That would give you this. Okay? So, how do you fret the note? Obviously, you do that with your finger. There's a couple different ways you can do that. It's really, there's, it doesn't matter, but it does matter to an extent. A lot of people are going to tell you you need to use your fingertips specifically. Some people will tell you that you can use the flat part of your fingertip. Either or will matter or will work. And either or will work. But for these purposes, I'll show you both. So let's look directly on the guitar here where I can get it. Hopefully I can get up here where you can see it well. We're getting way up on the fretboard just because that's where we need to be for the purposes of you being able to see this. So when you're looking at this, when you're fretting a note, you can either put it on your fingertip which means your finger's gonna be kind of bent up a little bit like this. See how that's bent up, how I've got that kind of bent up? Or you can put it right on the flat part of your finger underneath that, still on that first joint. So you can either be, I'll see if I can get a line on it from the string. You can either be right here, see where that indentation is on my finger? Or you can be right here, a little lower down. But, Either one will work. As we get into more advanced stuff, there are benefits and pluses and minuses to both depending on what you're doing, whether you're playing chords or individual notes and so on. So, sound-wise, it doesn't really make a difference. We've got fingertip, flatter part of the finger. really doesn't make a difference. Now, how hard do you press on those? Once again, it's going to be just like your pick. Remember, you don't want to put a death grip on it, but you also don't want to hold it so light that it flops around. Same thing with your fretting a note. If you put too little pressure, if you don't press down enough on the string, it's going to sound like this, which is kind of cool. You could do like Pink floyd sound sounding stuff, but that's not giving you a note. If you press down too hard, one, you're going to feel like it's going to hurt your fingers. And you don't be surprised. Your fingers are going to be pretty sensitive, and they're going to hurt when you first start playing anyway. I promise you they will. I also promise it will get easier the more you do it. You'll start building calluses, your left hand will start getting stronger, and you'll get, get better at this. Just hang in there. The more you practice, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So now we're off that sidebar. So remember I said you don't press it down tight enough, you get something like this. My, that's more of my fingers just resting on it. I'm not actually putting any pressure on it. <coughs> you press it down too much you actually will bend the note and you'll make it sharp you'll make it a little higher pitch than it should be so here's how I'll demonstrate this this note should sound like this if you press too hard you're gonna get something like this you hear that how it's Pressure, so try that. Press down on a string on any fret just for this sake. Do your 
second finger, your middle finger, the naughty finger, put that on the second fret of string number four. So one, two, three, four, second space, second finger. Press down on it really, really hard, like you're trying to squeeze that thing to death. Now start letting up on the pressure, lighten up your finger. You can hear how the pitch changes. <coughs> and if you get too light, hear the difference there? So you just want to find that sweet spot in the middle, in between too sharp or too light, where it's like this, and too sharp, where it bends the note like this. So it's right in the middle there. Okay? Practice that a few times. You're going to need to work on that a lot. Your fingers are not going to be very strong to begin with if you haven't played a, strong, a string instrument. But it will get easier, like I said. So we know how to fret the notes now. We know what the frets are. We know where to put our fingers. So let's learn our final chord. We're at 30 minutes right now, about 31 minutes. But let's learn our first chord. Uh, today we're going to learn an A chord. Technically, it's an A major chord. But basic music theory, jumping ahead a little bit. With music theory, if you just say that you're playing something in the key of A or you're playing an A chord, the assumption is that it is a major chord or in the major key, major scale. If it were to be a minor chord, we would say A minor or anything else, A diminished, anything like that. But a major chord, if you just say, I'm playing an A chord, the assumption is you're playing an A major. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me get in here. I'll show you how this works, what you play. So first thing we want is our bass note or our root note. That's the lowest frequency note, the lowest pitch note we're going to get. Do you remember our string names? Do you remember the names of the six strings we had? There was an A in there. Do you remember which one that was? Give you a hint. It's not number six, and it's not number four. What's in between? Number five. So your A string was your fifth string, this guy right here. Remember, counting from the closest to you is the biggest number, which is six. Closest to your head, so the next one down would be five. So that's an A. That is the first note we need to play an A major chord. So pick that a couple times. I'll put my hand, finger up here or my leg up here so you can see it. So now we need additional notes. That's our root note is an A. What I want you to do is I want you to take your middle finger, your naughty finger. I want you to take that and I want you to put that on the second fret of the fourth string. We've kind of practiced this earlier. I was setting you up for it. So, remember fourth string, six is the thickest, closest to your head. Five is the one we just did A, because we want that. And four is the next one down. So put your finger on that second fret and press down on the fourth string. You get this. The note that that is is actually an E. So we've got two notes here. Hold that finger down on that and play the one above it. So our open fifth string is an A. Our second fret on the fourth string that we're playing with our second finger, with our middle finger, is an E. So A, E. Play the two of those together. You have the root and the fifth note in an A major chord. So you have an A and an E. Strum the two of those together. You get something that sounds like this. Now, you're still learning to strum, so you may hit extra strings. Don't worry about that if you do. But what we're focusing on is five and four. Open fifth string, middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. So now, the next note in an A chord. Take your third finger, your ring finger, and put it on the second fret of the third string, so the one right below it. So we've got now our open A string, string number five, our middle finger on the second fret of our fourth string, which remember gives us an E, string number four, and our ring finger on the second fret of the third string, which is another, which is an A. -A. So notice there that's two A's and an E. A, E, A. So that's an octave, the two A's. This and this are the same note, only they're 12 half steps apart. You don't need to remember that, just remember they're both A's. You'll learn more of that later. So A, E, A. Play those individually. A, E, A. A, E, A. 
Now drag your pick across those three strings. You may need to watch it and go slowly, and that's okay, but it sounds something like this. Okay? So, we've got one more finger to use, and this is gonna be the hard one. This one's probably gonna hurt the most because it's your pinky, and your pinky, if you're like most people, this is your weakest finger on your right hand, or on your left hand, pardon me. It still is, even for me, playing guitar for 30 years. It's the one that gets used the least, so it usually has the less strength, and it's the smallest as well. We want to take your pinky. We want to put it on the second fret again, only this time we want it on the second string. That should give us this note. So remember, second string is the thinnest one down. The first string is the thinnest one down, so the second string is the one below that. So let's look at our notes again. We've got the fifth string is open. The second thickest, second closest to your head, is an A. String right below it, fourth fret, the fourth string. Second fret, middle finger, is an E. String right below that, ring finger, second fret, on the third string, is another A. And the one below that, pinky, on the second fret of the second string, is a C sharp. So, those four notes are... probably screaming right now that's okay that's normal but so let's strum those once again it'll probably sound something like this slowly as you're getting used to it and finally we have your first string notice we're pretty much out of fingers we got our first finger but it's way up here your first string you want to play open in this case <coughs> Remember the first string, what did we say that was? It was first string, the thinnest one. What was the note? What was it name? What was its name? It's an E. So that's another repeat. So your first string, you want to play that open as well, which is an E. So from the thickest string closest to your head down, we start with string five open with no fingers on it. It's an A. String four with your second finger on the second fret is an E. <coughs> String three with your third finger on the second fret or your ring finger on the second fret, that's another A. String two with your pinky on the second fret, that's a C sharp. That's the third of this chord. And then string one open is an E. So strum them all together slowly, sounds like this. In individual notes picked sounds like this. that with me. Picking from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A, E, A, C sharp, E. A, E, A, C sharp, E. Now let's strum them slowly. When you get comfortable, strum it a little faster, a little smoother. You want that strumming, you don't want it to, as you get more used to it and you're practicing, you don't want it to be like this. You want it to be one fluid motion. So try that with me a couple times. Now you may inadvertently hit this low string, the sixth string. If you do, that's okay. It is another E string, so technically it could still be part of this chord. Because remember I said that our E is our <coughs> fifth in this chord. It's the fifth note in this scale, in the A major scale. But also remember I said that we always want to start with our root notes. Typically, for what we're learning right now, we want it to be in the bass, meaning we want it to be the lowest string. So since this is an A, we want that A string to be the lowest note. You could technically play this E, your thick string with it, and it sounds like this, which is still technically an A major chord. It's just a weird inversion of that, which we'll get more into that much later. So one more time, your chord. Open A string, which is number five. Middle finger on the second fret of string number four, that gives us an E. Ring finger on the second fret of number of string number three, that gives us another A. Pinky on the second fret of string number two, that gives us a C sharp. And your open number one string gives us another E, so it's this. Got that? Congratulations, you just learned your first chord.
A major or an A chord. A lot more, it's a lot more pleasing sounding. Sounds better than doing this, doesn't it? <coughs> or maybe it doesn't, depending on what type of music. Maybe you like really atonal sounding stuff. I, I dig that sometimes. But in general, that's a pretty nice sounding chord, an A major chord. And there are many different ways to play that, but this is the first way to learn. So, that being said, let's real quickly kind of review everything we learned today, and then we're going to cut this because we're at about 40 minutes right now. I'm running a little bit long, which if we were on the lunch hour, we'd be cutting it pretty close. So, we learned how to hold our pick between our thumb and our first finger. We don't want to put a death grip on it where our fingers look like they're going to explode, but we don't want it so loose we're going to drop it somewhere where it's comfortable. We want that point, you can kind of see there, almost pointing right towards the middle of our end of our thumb, pretty close to it, something like that. You can see there, see where the point is? It's pretty close to pointing in line in the middle of my thumb. We want to rest our forearm on the body of the guitar, and we want it rested to where our finger that we're using to pick falls somewhere between the end of this light-colored board on my guitar and your bridge. Remember, this is called the fretboard of the neck, so we want it falling somewhere in the middle there, okay? Pieces of the guitar, parts of the guitar we learned. The body. On an electric guitar, it has pickups that help it be amplified. It has a bridge. Every guitar has a bridge, not just an electric guitar. And then this long piece of wood, looks like a board, is the neck. The front of the neck is called the fretboard. It's called the fretboard because it has these little wires on them that are frets. Remember, we use those for different notes. And then at the end, we have the headstock or the head of the guitar. So, we learned the difference between picking individual notes. This. Got a string that went a little flat there. Not uncommon on this type of guitar. We'll talk more about that much later down the road. And then we also learned what strumming is. Raking our string, our thing, or our pick across multiple strings. Picking strumming. Okay, from there, we learned our strings. We're going to go quick on this. First, the strings are numbered one through six. Remember, it's backwards of what you think. The biggest number is the one closest to your head when you've got the guitar in your lap like this. The smallest number is the one farthest away. So, our strings from the one farthest away to the one closest are one, two, three, four, five, six, the notes for those strings, the notes that they represent, so what they actually play for a note is E, B, G, D, A, E. Cover that again. First string, string number one, the one farthest away from you is the first string, it plays an E, so it is the E string. Second string, it plays a B, so it's a B string. Third plays a G, it's a G string. Fourth plays a D, it's a D string. Fifth plays an A, it's an A string. The thickest string closest to your head plays another E, so it's an E string as well. Then we learned about frets. Remember what we said talking about frets, that when I tell you to fret a note, you do not put your finger on that little piece of metal. You put it to the space just before that. Before meaning closer to the headstock, closer towards the end of the neck. So if I tell you to fret the third fret, you do not put your finger on that third metal bar, because it does that, you put it right before it. Remember? And we learned an A major chord. A major chord, remember, was our open A string, our fifth string. It was our middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. That gave us an E as the note. It's our ring finger on the second fret of the third string. That gives us an A. It is our pinky on the second fret of the second string that gives us a C sharp. And it is the open first string or the highest string that gives us another E, the highest pitch string that gives us another E. So together they sound like this. Or this. And remember, we just call it an A chord or we can call it an A major. They mean the same thing for these purposes. So. That is everything for today, folks. I hope this was super useful for all of you. Uh, like I said, this is something I'm going to be doing three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. It'll be streaming live at 1.15 Central Standard Time in the United States. Uh, realistically, uh, 
it will go probably for about 30, maybe 45 minutes if I can push it that far, but I'm on my lunch hour while I'm working from home, so I've only got so much time. We're gonna be covering the bare basics like this and moving forward a little bit at a time and building on the concepts that we learned. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I may go a little more in depth on the theory end of things, so that means we may not actually have a guitar in front of us, but we may have like a whiteboard or pieces of paper where we start learning things and be giving you some homework, start learning where notes are on the fretboard on the neck of the guitar. Because remember we said there's only A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's only seven notes. There's a lot more than seven frets here, which means obviously there are additional notes when you throw in sharp notes and flat notes and some additional things where they duplicate. We'll get more into later. Anyway, I hope this was super useful and helpful to everyone. Just wanted to start out and play. I love this. I love the ability, the opportunity to hopefully teach you and learn you something, or learn you something. Wow, I'm from the Ozarks. Teach you something maybe you don't know and maybe help you start learning to play guitar. <clears throat> you can follow me on here on Facebook. Obviously, if you're seeing this page, it was on my page, facebook.com slash music. I'm also probably most active on Instagram. It's under Benjamin France Music. You can search for that. And these videos are going to be posted on my YouTube channel, which if you search for Benjamin France Music, that will come up as well. I don't have that as my page name, like I said earlier, because I don't have enough subscribers for that yet because I'm just starting out. Also, I am active on Twitter, eh, active-ish on Twitter under Ben France Music as well, so you can find me on there. So... Next uh, session of Lunchtime Lessons, Guitar 101, Episode 2, will be coming this coming Friday, April the 3rd at 1.15 p.m. live. And then sometime within 24 hours after that will be posted on this page and on my YouTube channel as well. I guess I just leave you with this thought. In the times that we're dealing with right now, we all can feel very isolated. We all can feel very down or feel very anxious or feel very nervous. And that's a worldwide thing, folks. That isn't just for those of you that are watching this who maybe live in Southwest Missouri where I do. And you hear it said all the time, and it's probably the most generic canned thing in the world, that music is the universal language, and it is. So what better way to connect with each other than maybe learn how to speak that language? So that being said, I hope you all have a great night, and I will look forward to seeing you on uh, Friday. And of course, always comment, provide any feedback or input on these videos that you want, because I would love to make sure... I'm giving you what you need. Take care, everyone.